Yes, we have. Matt and Rich from Steam Forge <laughs> Games here. And we've got Dark Souls. Yes. Um, well, Matt, bits of it. A, a bit, tiny bit of Dark Souls. A, a bit of Dark Souls. Yeah. We, you don't see much of Dark Souls what usually. We, what we can show at the moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this has been one of the biggest Kickstarters ever? The Manhattan's. biggest board game Kickstarter. The biggest board game Kickstarter. Yeah. Let's just let that sink in a second. The biggest is it the biggest miniatures game Kickstarter. Uh, yes, it would be. Uh, right. Miniature ones are higher. So it's the big, it's the biggest board game, tabletop gaming Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. biggest Kickstarter in Britain, regardless. Yeah. 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 Well, congratulations, guys. Right. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure on delivering no that. Pressure. It'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. fine. Right. We'll do it one game at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about. Let's start from the beginning. So Dark Souls, in yep. case people don't know, video game franchise. Yes. Bandai Namco, um, phenomenally successful game, um, but but considered quite a quite a niche game. Yeah. Uh, certainly not a mainstream game, and the reason is it has a very very steep learning curve and it's very punishing. It's very it's, it's practically old school in a, in, a, yeah. in a in a sea of games where you can save anywhere and resume a game anywhere, and they just want you to see the entire game. Dark Souls says no. No, you must be good at yes. our game to see it. You must deserve to be able to go forward. And so it's a game that requires you to invest time and energy to actually get good. Get good at the game, yeah, right? Or, or, or suffer. Um, and, and people love that. They love that kind of old school feel. And it has a very, very loyal um, and active fan base actively playing all Dark Souls. All, there's people are still playing Dark Souls 1. Yeah. Um, all the way through to the, the most recent uh, incarnation, Dark Souls 3 which came out three or four weeks before we, we launched our Kickstarter. Okay, so this, of course, is the board game version yes. of that video game franchise. Uh, let's run through basics and mechanics then, so how is it going to work? Okay, so the game is, uh, we tried to replicate a lot of the dynamic flow. Because um, what we noticed when we were playing Dark Souls is that you know, it's not a static combat, you don't just walk in, start hitting the boss, and, and even for the board games we felt, when we went through a lot of dungeon crawls, we found that that was kind of a, a, a staple of the industry, was to get in a room, move towards things and roll dice. Uh, yeah. We didn't want to do that, so we invented this node system, uh, and the node system basically allows a real flexible movement, so you're not concentrating how many squares away you think you are, and you can basically move between that, and your stamina it speeds it, all up, it, speeds it? it up a yeah. lot, and the, your stamina and your damage are linked, so if you take damage from an enemy, it actually lowers your stamina bar, and if those two meet at any time, if you want to make an attack, use the stamina. If they meet, you die. Yeah. So you every decision, even moving, they can attack. You have to be fe fearful of of the consequences of that. So if I kind of into this guy here, if I decide to move across twice like this and make an attack, I've used free stamina to do that. Yeah. Uh, and this guy then might turn around, attack me. All of a sudden, my health bar is right down. I'm now in trouble. Might need some friends help me, or I'm I'm gonna run back trying to mess this up survive etc so. what's important with that is if, if your if your stamina is down and your health is close to your stamina then then you don't have any stamina left to, to dodge yeah and yep. you take the hit and that's it you're gone game over you've died yeah. so it is very much a what do I want to achieve right now versus what do I want to make sure I can still do in the near future mm. so you, there is a lot of risk reward balancing a lot of you know resource management and and I don't mean there's lots of little cubes to move about, it's still yeah. this cube and this cube, and when they touch in the middle, boom. Yeah. But the, the subtleties underneath that simple mechanic are, are huge. Mm. The, uh, the bosses as well in the game all come with an AI deck, uh, so the behavior deck, and that's basically a collection of cards that when you flip, it doesn't action. So you're playing against the, the board, basically. And, and that is drawn from pool of 10, so every time you play it, you're gonna have a different selection of five to work through. Okay. And, and even when you've run through all five, the deck doesn't shuffle again, it goes back over. So what you actually see is that you get to learn the patterns of the boss, just like the game. Yeah. Uh, even down to the grunts, the grunts will have an action they do every turn, and they can basically they can actually um, displace models. So they they can move into nodes, move you around, follow you around the board, and you know. And this kind of thing means that the, the whole dynamic of even playing the grunts means that you're constantly moving and flowing around. The board. Well, just on that note, the, the the grunts are controlled by the game. They're yeah. AI driven. Yeah, so it's fully cooperative. So it's a fully yes. cooperative game. Yeah. Um, there is no kind of stabbing over in the back. It is you need to work together to, to survive and, and to, to triumph in the game. Um, so what Rich is saying is, is, is right, that we build it so these guys will push players around the board and you create this swirling combat that actually makes the game feel 10 times more dynamic than, than anything else that we've seen yeah. out in the marketplace at the moment. You know, and, and we've done our research, we've seen things that we love and seen things that we're not, not so keen on. And, and the, the, the dynamic movement is, is one of the things that we wanted to inject into into this style of game. Yeah. So, 
you mentioned a couple of things there which make it work slightly different to the video game because you mentioned the health and the stamina are on the same bar. Yeah. The video game are two separate. Yep. Yeah. Um, I did manage to get a play of this at Salute. So did you I, like it? I loved. Well, I backed it for quite a lot of money. <laughs> oh, there so we go. That's, that's I made everything. my decision on this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's one thing there with the dice, which a lot of the dice had blank sides. There was yes. a chance you could go into a combat and not hit at all. So what made you made those slight variations from the video game when transferring to? The board game. So that's that's one of the biggest challenges, of course, is is um, is understanding that the the video game medium is very different from the cardboard and and plastic pieces medium, and yeah. and trying to make sure that we retain the essence and the spirit of Dark Souls and the overall feeling and intent of, of the design, and how do we translate that through into essentially a physical medium? You have to have RNG. You can't. It's very difficult to translate the full amount of RNG that's happening under the hood for, for the actual video game because that's, you know, on a PlayStation 4 that's got like eight you know, simultaneous processors were yeah. in a way computing everything all over the place and, and so we had to make sure that our AI behaviours were much more simple compared to, to the video game but still gave you that feeling of an, an attack window, an opportunity, a weakness, a response yeah. and then roll through it and, and again simplifying it down so it's quite mnemonic, quite easy to remember, you learn the patterns of the boss and once you've got the patterns of the boss and you understand where everyone needs to move, who needs to tank, who needs to do the, you know, do the damage, then you work together to defeat it, you've got that shared experience to take them out. But yeah, it's a board game, I think dice are an important part of board games. Um, so how did this come about? Did you approach Bandai Namco or Namco or Software? So we were down in London, uh, and there's a big uh, licensing fair down in London once a year and we were there um, just really to kind of get a feel for the for the opportunities that might be there and I, I've worked in the video games development um, industry for like the last 15 years or so and so there's a few people there that I knew and I saw someone that I thought I knew um, on, the, on the Namco stand I've made a couple of games for Namco and so I went over and said hello and just left a business card for them and um, and I get a call from uh, a guy called Shuhei or, uh, who gets in touch with us and says oh actually great great you drop by um, uh, how would you like to talk to us about the Dark Souls license? Do you think that could make a good board game? We're like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could make a good board game. I've got, I've got an idea. <laughs> Don't worry, we got you covered. So it wasn't a slam dunk as that. We went down there. Um, fortunately, because I'd worked with them before, they, they knew my name, they knew the kind of person that I was, got us in the front door, the, then the hard work side. We then need to put, put together a cohesive pitch um, that, that basically showed everything that we thought the game could could do and how it would resonate and amplify the Dark Souls universe. So that went uh, through Bandai Namco into From Software, uh, all the way through From Software, all the way back down again, uh, the feedback loop. Um, loved it, absolutely loved it, wanted to move to the next bit. So we did a physical um, demo that we then took down to, to London to, to actually play them through. Yeah. Played the game and that was it, deal was done and we were off and running. Cool. So what's next? I mean obviously successful Kickstarter. A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um, yeah. you know over the next kind of eight months, nine months we're gonna make sure that we keep all our backers up to date. So yeah. every step of the process we're gonna put in our time diaries up there, showing everything when we can do once we full approval and making sure that you know our community that's backed us, you know we're we, we've, we feel like we've used Kickstarter in a way that it should have been used again. It's, it's taking a concept and idea, working out with an audience for it, working out what they'd like, and taking input. And like, so, you know, we had the game about 80% locked of what the mechanics were, how it's going to play. But that last 20%, a lot of that has actually been influenced by the community during the Kickstarter. So we want to bring that over the next eight months you know, to show people what we've listened to and how that's impacted you know, the final product we're going to get. So, yeah, it's keeping people up to date. Communication is totally key for what we do as an important. So standard roadmap stuff for the moment is uh, we locked ourselves away, not last week, the week before, we went off to a little cottage in the Peak District uh, with a design team. Uh, we did nothing but play Dark Souls and refine the game um, for five days straight. That sounds depressing. <laughs> it's funny because I kind of went home and like, my missus was like, oh, did you have a good time? Good holiday. I'm like, I was working 14 hours a day. She goes, you don't look like you're working 14 hours a day. I'm like, I don't know about you guys, but after playing the video game, I feel as if I should go, I was like Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> Just to come back and feel Chill happy. Out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've got now um, the, the, the core game uh, is, is locked, the core uh, first pass of all of the 
uh, treasure, the abilities, the, the, the yeah, unique yeah, abilities so each of the characters have, the bosses, all the AI behaviors, we're all locked in and that's now going out to play test for the first round of feedback from a wider audience. Yeah. So um, that's gonna rinse and repeat for a number of times and then we'll go into layout and translation from that. On the other side of it, and that's that's the bit where Rich is now gonna start mostly looking after. My side is uh, starting to finalize on the sculpts, working with uh, Namco, Band uh, Bandai Namco to, to get approval for those um, and start getting that whole production process on the way. So busy times for the next okay. sort of three, six, nine months. Yeah, yeah. so you recommend nine months to Release. So we're, we're targeting April next year. April next year, uh, okay. we obviously, like most people, cars hope to deliver early. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've, we've done our timeline to deal with the success we've had. So yeah. we're hoping, we're only confident that we can meet our deadlines. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, good to see it when it comes out. Yeah. Looking forward to my delivery. Look forward to being back and showing you the actual, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the actual game. Excellent. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much.